In this video tutorial, I want to talk about box morph and how you can use it to morph uh, any solid into any surface. Uh, it can be a solid or a surface or even a curve, but in this tutorial, I will show you how I will use three different solids and morph them into a desired surface. So with box morph, and you can see that you can easily uh, morph those solids into the surface and here we have the results so uh, basically this is a, a demonstration of how you can use the box morph tool and you can also change the height uh, of your solid easily and morph it with box morph So to get started, first I'm going to uh, have a desired surface which we want to morph our solid into it. So I'm going to draw a simple curve and extrude that surface by uh, having my control key and extruding this. Okay, let's just draw it again. And here we go. Okay, I'm going to explode that and rebuild. So I have a NURB surface. And uh, first of all, we import that into the canvas by a surface tool. And the next step is uh, explaining about the box morph. So if I just search for morph, you will see I have a box morph here. We can also go into the trans uh, into the uh, transform section, and here it goes, box morph. So uh, let me just explain about this inputs and what it needs. So the first input is the geometry we want to morph or to move onto the surface and we can define anything we want. Uh, let me just import one of these uh, B-reps and this is the geometry we want to morph. The next is the reference uh, box. So basically it uses a box that uh, contains this uh, B-rep and morphs it into a box which will be will sit on this surface. So I'm going to easily, we can easily use a box from the main menu here, the Parms menu, give the box to the B-Rep and give it to the reference. You can also go to the uh, surface tool and use the bounding box tool. So, and if it has, um, uh, let me just show you here, uh, let me just draw a box. Have the cylinder here and delete the box. Uh, if we have different modules, different parts, uh, assume that we have something like this here and something like this. Okay, let me just make it a better one. So I'm going to show you right here. And assume that we have something like this. Okay. So what can, what can we do if we have two or three different parts? We can easily set this to this uh, parts and use the bounding box and right click on it and use the union box. So I'm going to right click and use the union box and we have one box here. And this is the reference box we're going to use. We don't need to change the plane because we are uh, drawing it in the XY plane and that's okay. So the target is a twisted box and uh, what is a twisted box it's something like this if we have a box we usually have eight points exactly in the same height four points in the uh, bottom of the box and four points on the top and this is a simple box okay excuse me for the drawing but uh, what is a twisted box is that the points uh, change they can they can be not exactly up the uh, bottom face of the box so assume that we have a, a box and this is the bottom of the box and we can have four points rotating so uh, this can be a twisted box if I just draw and connect these dots you can see that this is a twisted box it can also be a bigger one so we can have four points here and the box will be 
uh, scaled something like this. So a twisted box is basically a box that has been twisted or has been uh, rotated or something like that. Okay, how can we make it? We have many, many options. I'm going to explain those in uh, the Grasshopper tutorial section of the website, uh, which you can uh, enter, uh, enter in the website. But for now, the best and the easiest way you can go is to go to the intersect section and a, in the transform, excuse me, transform section and use the surface box tool. Uh, basically, we can produce twisted box in uh, uh, three different ways. A blend box, a, bo a surface box, and a twisted box. Uh, these uh, are different methods. This one will produce boxes between two surfaces. This will produce on a one surface, which we have here. And the twisted box is more advanced because you can make all the eight points by yourself. And I will talk about that later. So let's just go for the surface box. Let's give the surface to the input. And here we have the surface. Uh, the second input is the domain. That's the domain two input. And this is because you can make anything you want. But for now, and the most easiest way you can go is to use a divide a domain two. It means that I'm going to divide this uh, surface domains into uh, equal sizes. So basically you can find that in the math domain and uh, here we go. We have the divide domain tool. It's just like isotrim and if I give this to the segments we can define how many sections we want into the u and the v domain. Okay, let's just change this so we can have different parts. And the last one is the height of the box. You can see we will have a height. And if I give this a height, you can see these are the twisted box output. If I bake them, you can see the twisted box. They are not twisted, but uh, anyway, uh, there's a twisted back, uh, box output. So we can at last give the twisted box to the target. And uh, here we go. What happens here is that we have two uh, um, inputs and one will go for the first box, the second will go for the second box, and the third will also go for the third, the fourth, and so on. So I can just right click on the BREP and use a graft, make it a group, okay? So I'm going to give this a graft. You can see what happens here. You can also uh, change the bound, bounding box because each of these will have a bounding box so I'm going to right click on the content and use a flatten because I want a bounding box for both of those two parts. I'm going to talk about the graft and the flatten uh, in other tutorials but what happened here is that we want two uh, models trapped in one box so it's going to morph that. You can easily see that how uh, we can produce a wave-like pattern so I could just turn this off and you can see the wave pattern emerging and uh, uh, let's just go for another one let's go for just this so you can see okay and this will morph that box into the surface and here we go we'll easily change the numbers of the u and the v uh, direction and the last one Let's just set this to the circle and you can see that we have this. Okay. And another box morph. A uh, box morph is a great tool. You can use it to, to morph anything onto your surface. And the last one is, let me set this to the pyramid and here we go we can change the height so the height of the pyramid will change also and we have the results you can also use a, a random reduce tool to delete those uh, morphed uh, B reps okay I'm going to give about 20 delete uh, reducing on the uh, Moodle and give a seat to this so each number will de uh, define a different random reduce result 
and we can change the number we want to delete. So you can use these methods to morph any uh, Moodle. So I just explained for two or three different parts. You can easily use graft and flatten to produce that uh, result. You can see here we can have many, many complicated uh, 3D models. We can have 3D patterns here. So I'm going to end this because it, I just want to talk about box morph and show you how you can use it to morph uh, the models. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will try to answer you in a separate video. And thank you.